So, who here has ever wanted to be a superhero? Don't be shame. I know everyone's wanted to be a superhero. So that's 99, if not 100% of us, has ever wanted to be a superhero. And that comes as no surprise, considering that Marvel Comics has over 5,000 superhero characters and DC Comics over 10,000. The mere three Iron Man movies made over $1 billion. So that leaves no space to wonder why we're utterly captivated by these superheroes. But if we could be honest with ourselves for a second, who here can really lift a car by themselves? What about fly by themselves? No one. So not even our $10 cape from Walmart will ever make us a superhero. But that's not the only type of hero there is, right? So the point of this talk is to somehow convince all of us that we are also heroes. Maybe not the Superman type of hero, but a more realistic one. So we could probably have a unanimous agreement on this. A very well-known person and well-accepted hero is Mother Teresa. And if I could herd you into English class for a second, and we can do a compare and contrast of two well-known and accepted heroes. On one side, we have Superman, and then on the other side, we have Mother Teresa. So if we go to Superman, we have this huge muscular guy in a skin-tight suit and slicked black hair. And then on this side, we have Mother Teresa, who's a frail old lady, and it looks like if I hugged her too hard, she might break or something. On this side, we have Superman, once again, who has superhuman strength and the ability to fly. And then on this side, if we go back to Mother Teresa, she has nothing. She has no superpowers. But we all know that these, both of these completely different people are both heroes. And that's for one main reason. It's because a hero is just someone who changes something for the better. And if you could store that tidbit of information in your mind for a second, I would like to tell you a story about one simple man who made an exponential difference in the people around him. So one cold winter morning, a little baby boy was born. Now I'm not telling you the story about Jesus. I'm instead telling you a story that's much closer to home. So this young boy grew up in an extremely poor family. He shared a room with his three other siblings and a bed with his brother. And I can personally attest that I've shared a room with two other siblings and I couldn't even handle it. And this man shared it with three siblings, and he was so poor he had no Wii, no iPhone to occupy his time with, he instead spent his days riding his bike around his neighborhood and climbing trees for fun. And starting very early, he became the unofficial coach of his high school swim team while he was still on the swim team himself. He then went off to the army, and when he came back home, he did what I think made him a hero. He started a swim team. And I know this doesn't seem like a big deal. I mean, a swim team, whoop-de-doo, it's not that big. But when you start a swim team, you start a family. You start swimming when you're about six years old, possibly younger, and then by the time you're 17, 18, ready to graduate and go off to college, you walk into that pool and every single person there knows your name. And while he was teaching these kids how to swim, he taught them life lessons, like perseverance, and when someone needs you, you are always there for them. And while he was teaching these kids how to live their lives and how to swim too, he took them to state competitions, junior nationals, all the way up to the semifinals of the Olympic trials. And you guys are probably thinking, yeah, you could, you could tell me this guy's name, you could show us a picture of him, but there's no possible way we ever could have been affected by him. You're probably mistaken. This man's name was Spencer Shiraishi, and he was my grandfather. And if you've lived on Maui for a while, or if you've grown up on Maui, I can almost guarantee that you have a sibling, a family member, a relative, or a friend that has been somehow affected by my grandfather. But I mean, he was just a boy, a man, who grew up in Plantation Pu'ia, who swam in disgusting dead cat-filled irrigation ditches, who started the Maui Swim Club in the Kahului Pool. But yet, as he was doing this, he was able to change so many lives. And when people look at his past, like they do with a lot of people who have done great things, they tend to glamorize it, saying, oh yeah, he came from rustic put ya. Rustic? He came from nothing. He could have become a beggar on the side of the road and no one would have cared. No one would have batted an eyelash. Some people would have even gone as far as to say, yeah, look at his past. I'm not surprised. And some of the same expectations are set on our generation as kids by the media, maybe sometimes even our parents and teachers, we're expected to go to high school, graduate with mediocre grades, A's, maybe a couple B's here or there, then go to college, get a degree, 
get a job, get married, have kids, and possibly grandkids, then pretty much just die. We aren't expected to make a change. And if somehow we were able to become heroes like Harry, Hermione, and Ron, we would get our names on chocolate frog cards and we would get a party thrown for us. But I mean, yeah, that's great, but how am I supposed to become a hero? I'm not going to go off to Indonesia and start some sex trafficking, save the girls, or I'm not going to be able to start a big swim team or something. I mean, I can barely organize my own room, let alone a whole organization. But I mean, yeah, that would be great if we were able to do that. But if I could bring you back to that tidbit of information that I asked you to store a while ago about the fact that a hero is just someone who changes something for the better. And if we're able to look under those ideas that, oh, I'm not pretty enough to do something. I'm not smart enough to change anything. I mean, I'm the youngest of three children and compared to my, my older brother and my older sister's academic and athletic abilities, I pretty much suck at everything. If we're able to look under all that, there is a person there that can change something. Even the smallest thing, there is a person there that is a hero. Because a hero is just someone who changes something for the better. And I know that we can all do that. So I'd like to leave you guys with a quote by a woman who came from probably worse circumstances than any of us did. She was both blind and deaf. Her name was Helen Keller. I am only one, but I'm still one. I cannot do everything, but I can still do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse something that I can do. Thank you.